I'm pleased to be joined in the studio this morning with Daniel Amelin, who is the project manager for the Somerville Ave Construction, and Jesse Moose, who is the construction liaison for the uh, city of Somerville, and in particular, this project going on. So r remind us what this, this project is all about, because you've been, this is the third time in the studio for you both. Yes. Welcome back. Thank you for having <laughs> us. We're always happy to Likewise. come down to Central Media Center and talk about the project. Yeah, yeah. I, I ran into you outside maybe about a month ago, and, and you said you wanted to do another one of these. Yeah. And we're always happy to, to have an update about the progress with, yeah. with the uh, Union Square project. So uh, I think it's a good place to start with reminding us about what this project is all about. Sure. So uh, this project, after many years in, in a design phase, uh, ultimately the intent is to address uh, historic flooding in and around Union Square uh, because this area receives two-thirds of the city's stormwater outflow. Uh, the area is subject to flooding, uh, as I'm sure you and many other folks in the neighborhood know. Uh, so again, th with, with the intent of addressing recent flooding issues and historical flooding issues, uh, this project ultimately sees the installation of a new stormwater box culvert. Uh, it's 14 feet wide by 6 to 8 feet tall, uh, and it extends from Union Square all the way down to McGrath Highway. Uh, ultimately, the installation of this infrastructure uh, leads to the engineering's overall goal for the city to separate stormwater and sanitary waste uh, from sewers, which historically have been combined into one pipe for the past 100 plus years. Uh, as this is no longer an industry standard, uh, this project was developed and is now currently being implemented. Uh, in addition to this one stormwater box culvert facet, uh, we also have new sewers, new water mains, uh, all happening underground. And upon completion, we'll have all new streetscapes between Union and McGrath, uh, which involve uh, resurfaced roadways, widened sidewalks, uh, new bike lanes, in some areas protected bike lanes, uh, all new green stormwater infrastructure uh, to facilitate uh, inflow and infiltration into the ground to take essentially these, these stormwater flows out of our system uh, to prevent the overburden. Mm -hmm. And uh, ultimately it, it, it's in conjunction with a lot of development that's happening around the area. So. Uh, Right now, we're about a year and a half into a three-year project, so we're about halfway done. Uh, project still remains on schedule, and, and we're excited to see the end result. That's a, that's a really succinct update, <laughs> and it's always good to keep that in the back of your head as, as lanes are closed and, and uh, parts of streets are closed and then reopened. Um, so yeah, thank you for that. Sure. Um, so what about the work that was done last year? Um, specifically, you said we're at the halfway point of a three-year project. What was done? Uh, what's been done up to now? Uh, so, as I offer my response, let me just give some context. This project was started uh, springtime 2018, uh, and as I mentioned, with with the major uh, facet of of this whole project being this installation of box culvert, uh, that work actually didn't start until February of last year. So we almost, you know, a full year went by before we actually started the bulk of this work. Uh, that being said, we started in February 2019 here in Union Square. Uh, that essentially involved a massive excavation and, and uh, disruption to the intersection and to commuters uh, for all uh, multimodal transportation, you know, pedestrians, bicyclists, public transit, lastly motor vehicles. Uh, and as we worked our way out of that location, we've been proceeding east towards McGrath continuing the insulation of culvert one section at a time. Uh, each section is about five feet wide, so it's a very long, arduous process. Uh, and, and ultimately, at this point in time, uh, as I reflect over the past year, we've gotten more than half of this infrastructure already installed. Uh, along the way, we encountered many delays. At the time, it's unfortunate, uh, but luckily with, with our project team between city staff, other city departments, our consultant and contractor, uh, we collectively came up with a solution to essentially go out of sequence and, and kind of hopscotch some of the areas. Uh, we were presented with a metaphorical roadblock, so to speak, uh, in terms of you know, challenges in coordinating with utility companies. Uh, 
so that became literal roadblocks. <laughs> became literal roadblocks. Yes, correct. Um, and it, again, at the time, it's unfortunate, and then uh, it, we were threatened with delays uh, and, and fears of this project exceeding three years. Uh, but ultimately, we, we found creative solutions to keep our contractor working uh, towards positive progress uh, to the point where a lot of work that we would be doing now, uh, you know, had these challenges not come up, uh, they've already accomplished. Granted, uh, it's, it's not to say that you know, we're nearly done and, and a lot of the challenges we have experienced won't resurface. Uh, but ultimately, it's, it's a great thing to see that uh, you know, throughout all these challenges and delays, we've managed to, to keep going. Yeah. Um, so that said, roughly uh, 50, 60 percent of our culvert work is, is now complete and installed. Still a long way to go, sure. But uh, at the same time, they also managed to, to install all new water mains up and down the street, both sides of the street, uh, which not only improves water quality, uh, but it, it also improves the flow rate at which it arrives at your house in terms of pressure. Uh, and improves fire suppression systems uh, for a lot of buildings and businesses in the area. Um, and then, <clears throat> excuse me, lastly, I, I just want to say that a good portion of this project involves sewer relocation and, and the installation of new sewers, all of which, been, all of which have been complete to date. Uh, so while many people who drive through the area probably curse at all the lane shifts and closures and you know, the, the, the varying work zones that have been set up, uh, I, I do want to say that well, uh, this work is happening, and, and we've gotten to a point now where we can say that half the project is actually installed, um, which I think is a great achievement, despite the fact that most people probably won't have the chance to see it because it's underground. Right. Um, right. So there, there's you know, something special about acknowledging you know, $20 million plus of work in the past year and a half. Uh, just the fact that you, you can't see it, uh, it, it's something that we anticipate lasting hundred years or more. Hopefully. Hopefully. Yeah. Fingers crossed. <laughs> so what's going on now uh, in the winter of 2020? So right now we are doing some restoration in kind of the Union Square proper area, including if you look in the background, you see a new mast arm going up at the intersection of Webster and Bow. This um, has actually been down since last February, mm -hmm. and it has impeded cars from going from Webster through the intersection straight to Bow Street. Putting it up today, after we test it a little bit, will allow that to that rehappen. And it'll, you know, traffic coming from Cambridge will not be able to go straight through Union Square. Um, other than that, we've also kind of repaired sidewalks in interim condition. We do plan on coming back in the spring and putting down uh, final condition, also planting trees, and just preparing for you know what the the final condition of Union Square will look like when all this is done. So we're down there, and then we also have a work zone uh, from Miriam to Medford Street of Culvert Install. Yeah, on the so, other side of Union Square. Yeah, I see the uh, the blocks. <laughs> kind of near your house. Yeah, near my house, <laughs> uh, block by block. Yeah. Is, is being closed off as as right. we lay down the the culvert. Correct. Yeah. All right. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And we're trying to be a little more cautious. You know, we know that we've taken a lot of space in the city. So as we closed Rossmore the other day, we wanted to make sure that we re reopened Miriam. So we're trying to only have one street closed at a time. Um, and our contractor has been able to work around those requirements. Mm -hmm. And do you foresee any uh, community impacts? I mean, you know, a street closed is always a community impact. You know, a sidewalk not being available and having to detour is always impactful. Mm -hmm. Noise from construction is something we're always aware of. You know, I make a point of, you know, as we're down there in Rossmore, going to Vinyl Bakery, talking to them, going to the Portuguese Club, talking to them, letting them know what's going on, and, you know, letting them have my contact information to reach out to me with any questions. Mm -hmm. And then you touched on what's going to happen after the winter, but is there anything specifically you can share about what's happening with the spring and summer with the, with the project? Okay. Yeah, essentially, uh, the, as we look ahead to the next few months, uh, we're preparing to set up a, a, a new work zone uh, in the intersection of Prospect Street and Somerville Ave. Uh, and as you know, it's a very busy intersection. Uh, this work zone, essentially, uh, originally it was actually designed as a rotary in, in wanting to keep traffic flowing. Uh, but ultimately, until construction started, uh, it was determined that uh, 
that setup wouldn't work uh, just based on the size of, of the excavation happening outside, the size of the equipment, and the size of the materials being installed. Uh, so we've actually gone back in, in conjunction with our consultant uh, and drafted up a, a new work zone which will essentially encapsulate uh, the northern portion of Somerville Ave, uh, kind of say middle of the road north to uh, the edge of this building on, on Prospect Street. And we're actually going to close Prospect Street up to the edge of the parking lot in the Union Square Plaza. Um, so as you can imagine, that will be extremely impactful to the surrounding area. And you know, we're, we're working with uh, developers in the area who are, who are about to start their work. Uh, we're working with uh, state agencies in, in thinking of the bridge closures that will be reopening in the spring and what those traffic impacts will be. Uh, but ultimately, we are constrained uh, to a certain time of year for this work. Uh, so as I mentioned earlier, we've, we've managed to kind of proceed eastbound down the street. Uh, we ended up skipping over Prospect Street. And the reason is there's two 36-inch natural gas mains. Uh, of course, wintertime, people like to use their heat. Yeah. <laughs> so those pipes are full and flowing every day. Uh, so the thought of trying to excavate and dig next to those is a very scary thought, uh, especially in light of you know, recent regional uh, right. issues with, with natural gas. Uh, so ultimately, it, it, it's uh, the constraint at the beginning is we cannot start work until you know, warmer weather. We're currently estimating end of May, beginning of June. Mm -hmm. uh, at the back end, similarly, as we get into September, temperatures start dropping natural gas usage increases. Uh, so we have to finish our work around that time. Um, so and again, it's, it's with, with these mega structures being installed. Uh, Prospect Street is a perfect corridor for many other utilities. Uh, telecommunications, these, these natural gas mains. Uh, we have old oil transmission lines, which essentially are electrical services, uh, 60 years old plus. Um, so there's, there's a lot of things uh, for lack of, of a navigation. better term, in the way. Yeah. Um, and, and as Jesse mentioned, trying to perform the, this sort of open heart surgery of you know, putting something in the ground without really a, you know, touching anything else, it's challenging, right? Mm. Um, so it, it, it will be a lot of work. Uh, we're kind of developing plans now on, on what the best way to uh, reach out to the public is, our constituents, business leaders, business owners in the area, uh, so that everyone is informed uh, with, with several months in advance, so uh, they can plan accordingly just as we will. Uh, and of course, along the way, we'll, we'll work with the community to make the impacts uh, as, as minimal as possible, really. Um, yeah. and, and unfortunately, I think just in the past year, uh, you know, not everything's perfect, and, and we hear complaints and requests from well, everyone that comes through here. Uh, and, and kind of reflecting on those lessons learned, we actually are, are trying to get ahead of some of the issues that we foresee could happen. Uh, so it's an exciting time, and, and it's really, this is a major project milestone to get through this intersection, uh, which will eventually lend its way to, to restoring Union Square through Prospect Street, as Jesse had mentioned earlier. Yeah, uh, this is the big burrito. <laughs> we have it coming up this summer, so we've been, okay. we've been talking about it since last year in preparation of how we're going to do the outreach strategy, how we're going to detour properly. For instance, just to pick up what Dan was saying, uh, the parking lot will be open. Mm -hmm. So that will still be accessible even though we'll have our work zone almost right to it. So there will be, it'll be an interesting way to see how cars get to these businesses, but they will be available. We will not be closing any businesses. You mentioned outreach. Um, how specifically can the community be in touch with you, and how are you going to be in touch with the community through all this? Sure. So I'm down here a couple times a week. You can probably see me walking around. I try and pop into businesses, even if it's just like waving hello to master printing. Um, I also make my cell phone number available. If anyone has any questions, feel free to reach out to me. For instance, yesterday we were putting a new catch basin in front of Urban Axes, and Jessica, the manager, called me. She was like, I'm so happy I just can reach out to you whenever I need a question and answer it. And I'm like, that's what I'm here for. Uh, we also have our kind of a catch-all email address. We have the construction at somervillema.gov. That goes to the infrastructure and asset management team as well as the communication team. And we kind of triage what the issue is and figure out how the best response or how to deal with it. Uh, and we have actually our construction newsletter. comes out every Friday. Are you signed up for it? I am. Excellent. Yeah. And also SMC has actually been helping us yeah. by getting the word out by transcribing the construction newsletter and putting it on TV. So we appreciate yeah, we're that. we're happy to do that. Yeah. 
Um, and then there's also just um, putting a comment on your Facebook page. <laughs> That's only for special people. <laughs> Giving you a hard time. <laughs> <laughs> I will say it, it's an opportunity like this here today uh, that it, it is just an extra step that we want to take. You know, for for any of your viewers who otherwise may not be signed up for some of these newsletters or construction updates. Uh, and and really quickly, the only other thing I want to say is we're actually in the middle of scheduling uh, another community meeting for this spring. We're looking sometime end of February. March. Uh, ideally, it, it, we can host this community meeting on a day where there's you know, not 10 feet of snow, so it's easily accessible. Uh, in the past, we've we've held meetings at the public safety building, uh, and, and really wanting to seek out you know the, the most inaccessible folks in the neighborhood, uh, and providing them an opportunity to come and listen and provide feedback. So, uh, stay tuned for that. Yeah. Once we set a date, uh, we'll, we'll be sure to notify everyone. And I know you've also had a presence at some farmers markets once the weather gets warmer and and uh, we use a lot of um, the you know Union Square businesses to help get us out you know so Union Square Main Street is a great asset to us we're in contact with Jessica all the time they have a monthly meeting and I always make a, a point of being there and providing updates when needed about construction just also it's a great opportunity to talk to businesses excellent is there anything else you want to touch on. I think that's it. And we're also, we're just yeah, it's been super really appreciative to have you guys here. And Absolutely. you guys know what the construction impacts have been because your building is right there. And we are, are gracious that you keep inviting us back despite yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> well, we, we love being at the, uh, the forefront of all this information and, and passing it along to our community. And we appreciate you wanting to come back and share, share your knowledge and letting us know what's been done and what's to come. Uh, Daniel Amelin and Jesse Moose, thanks for being here. Dave, thank thanks, you Dave. so much. Appreciate it.